are told to work hard to become independent and successful in life, but we're also told to give joyfully and not to cling to the things we work so hard to get. God reminds us that everything is His. We are entrusted on this earth with time, talent, and treasure. In this podcast, we will learn to live as Jesus teaches. Hey, welcome back to the Entrusted by God podcast. I'm Steve Wood. I'm the lead pastor at Mount Pisgah Methodist Church, and we welcome you today as we continue to pursue uh, the heart of God and to live the life that God has entrusted unto us in full abundance. That's our goal. We invite you to join us in that journey, and we're here to support you in that journey however we can. Uh, today, uh, I'm joined by Ray Bachman and Dwayne Wood and Mickey Lines, and uh, we're going to talk about basically what we say and how we say it and use the rule of thumb, does it build up? Does it build up? Does it tear down? Does it edify? Is it in line with God's heart and will for his uh, people and for his kingdom work? And so we're going to the uh, book of James in the third chapter, and Dwayne, you've got a passage to read for us that no doubt will spur a lot of conversation. Absolutely. So James 3, 3 through 10, and I'm reading out of the New King James Version. Indeed, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Look also at ships. Although they are so large and driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder whenever the pilot, wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles? Mm. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird of reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind, but no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless our God and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. That's heavy. I am well, so convicted already. That, that's yeah. that's heavy. I'm I'm reminded that uh, uh, the tongue is merely is reflecting what's inside of us. It's the heart. That's mm. remember when Jesus told the disciples, wow, "It's not what you put in your insightful. body, yeah, and what passes through your body. What what gives you away, what defiles you, is what comes out of your mouth. Your, yeah, your tongue. Yeah." How, you know, as I read this passage, I, I basically think I am so embarrassed. If somebody were to play tapes of things I've said over my lifetime, I would be totally embarrassed yes. of some of the things I've said. It's like, Lord, <laughs> I wish I could erase. You know, and, and likewise, obviously, I'm proud of some of the things I've said also. <laughs> yeah. But this is so convicting. Um, good thing our wives aren't here to talk about this first, because oh, well. I think there's times when we've said things at home, we like, oh, I hope it's not recorded. But it is. It the tongue is 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 a blessing and can be a curse. Um, I've seen people just totally encouraged by words that have been spoken, and I've seen people that have been torn down. I've been involved in this ministry that we do these um, men retreats, and it deals a lot of of, of woundedness um, of our past. Oh, and wow. it's just amazing yeah. how many guys once they start opening up. You know, um, they just share the words that they were spoken in their lives by their parents sometimes, like, you'll never amount to anything. You're just, you never do the right thing. Just this condemnation. And it's it's marked them, sadly, as an adult. Yeah. And uh, they have to really work through that and, and, and look to God for their acceptance and love and forgiveness. But um, this is a heavy topic, and uh, words are powerful. And we have to be oh, so yeah. careful, even... With our kids, with our spouses, with our friends, with our family members, it's just um, I've seen it. I've seen I've seen it destroy, and I've seen it lift up. But 
this is something we've got to take to heart. You know, I can uh, recall as I think about just this opening part of all the times and in interaction with my children uh, and with my uh, wife where I saw a head drop after I said something I wish I hadn't have mm-hmm. said. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's amazing that words can cause heart wounds mm-hmm. that go deeper than physical wounds. Mm-hmm. And it, to your point, uh, Ray, uh, can often be carried and internalized for years and years and years. Mm-hmm. Uh, in terms of praying the scripture, it occurs to me that we got a couple of images here that are really interesting. The first one is a bit in a horse's mouth, uh, because you, if if you know anything about equestrian activities, you can indeed turn stop <laughs> a horse because of the bit that is in his mouth. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. N- many years ago, when I first came to Christ. I got involved in a full gospel businessmen's fellowship international <laughs> luncheon. And man, mm-hmm. I was in over my head. I was a new Christian and uh, these guys were on fire for Jesus mm-hmm. and I was learning from them. It was good. But we break into these small group circles. Mm-hmm. And I, I remember this from 40 years ago. Mm. So think about this. Mm-hmm. I had a guy that prayed over our group, Lord, put a bit in our mouth and a hook in our nose and lead us to where you want. I was saying, whoa, brother, bro, whoa, 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 whoa. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, you know, and so internally he's praying. I'm agreeing with him, but what I'm feeling is, is, man, I am nowhere near that surrendered yet. That, Mm -hmm. you know, that I'd be obedient to God like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mm -hmm. then the second one is the whole idea, not of a ship, but think in terms of a fleet or an armada and trying to turn them all uh, in fierce winds. Mm. And what turns them is ultimately a very small rudder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they're 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 sunk without it, as we're finding out off the uh, Spanish coast. Hmm. The yeah. orcas they go after the rudder, and then they're sinking the ships. Yeah, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. Um, you know I'm I'm very guilty of um, misuse of my tongue many a times over the years, but I. I also know that kindness and words of kindness and expressing words of kindness, whether it's spoken or communicated, but how much God reminds me that you overcome evil with good. Mm -hmm. And you can get points across. You can do things in such a way It may take you a little longer, but you can do things in such a way that it helps tame that tongue, so to speak. And it's a challenge uh, for somebody like me who is a little bit quick with some of the Mm -hmm. thought processes that I go through and quick to make judgments and and, uh, temperament and whatnot. But it, it really does help, and I've been challenged in my life a number of times to actually sit down and thoughtfully put something down in paper and reply back to someone that I wanted to just <laughs> yeah hammer. <laughs> I'm showing my fist. Hammer uh, uh, based on what their words to me were. I wanted to come right back at them. And, and the times that God has stopped me in my tracks and slowed me down and said, hold on, mm-hmm. big boy. Tame your tongue mm-hmm. and sit down and pray about it, think about it, and then respond. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, wow, well, you, know, you know it. It it's incredible to think about this in both ways: <clears throat> saying the right thing, mm-hmm. the noble thing, 
the true thing, the edifying thing, the constructive thing, the affirming thing. And equally important is not saying the wrong thing. Hmm. Uh, I uh-huh. don't know who invented or who came up with the idea of the five by five model. We've talked about it here uh, in some of our messages over many years. I think the last time Alan White, when he was teaching, talked about the five by five method. But here's the five by five method mm-hmm. as it works with our spouse. Uh, uh, and uh, I, I commend this to all of you who may be married or mm-hmm. uh, in a relationship, whatever. Uh, at the end of a long work day, uh, the five by five method is as soon as you come into the house, the apartment, whatever, you spend five minutes within five feet of your loved one. Hmm. All right. Now, here's what I've learned. What Leanne wants from me. It's not what's on my mind. Hmm. She doesn't want me to talk. Guess what she wants from me? She wants me not to talk Hmm. and be fully present and listen. Mm -hmm. Now, is that taming the tongue or is that cueing the ears? Which is that? Both. Both? (laughs) Yes. Yeah. (laughs) One of of those questions you answer with yes. Excuse me. When I think about taming the tongue in, in, in a positive way, I think about Jesus. There were two times that I recall where the Father uh, affirmed him, so to speak, with words. And one was at the Transfiguration, where the Father said, This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. And also, um, the other time was when he was baptized, you know, a voice from heaven said, this is from the Father. And, you know, I've always thought about that those passages saying, did Jesus really need, I mean, he was fully God himself, but for some reason, um, that affirmation was important. Mm-hmm. Um, those are words of encouragement. Those were words of God's mouth, so to speak, to his beloved son. And so that just makes me realize how powerful words can be. I know growing up, um, you know, my sister, I used to ask my dad different questions, and a lot of times he wouldn't he wouldn't give us give us exact answers. He would say, uh, "You're a Bachman, not that you're better than somebody, but right. Bachmans took the high road." Right. Well, I mean, that sounds affirming, but in a way, I interpreted that as kind of um, performance driven acceptance. In other words, mm-hmm. you perform for people's acceptance and love and care, and so that really, in a negative way, carried on into. My Christian life, when I became a Christian, oh my gosh, I was a wild man. I, I witnessed everything that moved. <laughs> okay, if you look at my Bible when I was a new Christian, yeah. I mean it's so marked up you can't even hardly read it. Um, and I would just went to every Bible study, every time the doors, and so because I was trying to gain God's acceptance uh, and love and care because yeah. it was inferred to me you by words that you take it to the highest level, which. Sounds good, but it can be dangerous taken the wrong way. And so I, and you know, and so I kind of took that same drivenness into business and trying to get acceptance. And so realized, you know what? I don't have to earn God's love and forgiveness and acceptance. Mm. He's already given that to me. I don't have to perform. So now I can really hang on to the words of grace and love and uh, unconditional love. And that's transformational because it, Freeze you up sure it is. to where yeah. you don't feel like you have to keep performing for people to accept and care for you. Yeah. You know? And so then your response uh, becomes not a need for acceptance. You ex- you receive mm-hmm. the loving acceptance of God, and then your response becomes an act of worship yeah. as a response to God who has first loved us. What a beautiful thing, yeah. and that's a breakthrough. It, it? it becomes a want to and not a have to, yeah. and that's a big turn. That is know. fascinating. Mm-hmm. So see how great a forest a little fire kindles. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess we might as well talk about escalation <laughs> of uh, conversations that are emotionally charged. Man, learning a timeout method is really good. Take a break, whatever you want to call it. But most trouble 
uh, when it comes to interpersonal relationships, not just family, uh, is basically the fuel of escalation in words exchanged. And uh, to learn that art and to see that danger and to have some mechanism, time out, take a break, hmm. even walk away, I don't know. Uh, different people handle it differently. But at some point, you've got to stop the escalation because then you're going to have more and more increasing heart wounds, mm -hmm. and greater is the likelihood that in that emotional escalation, things are going to be said that are both untrue, mm -hmm. that you didn't really mean, but that really cause great damage, like a forest fire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, um, I'm reminded that uh, one of the things the Lord's taught me over the years, particularly more in my latter years, is that um, the non-escalation is something to pay attention to, and it's the it's the the gift, uh, if you will, to the process. And that goes back to what I was saying earlier about kindness and. Um, you just have to, you just have to engage with people and not respond in like kindness. You show the love of the Lord, and I mean that's that's what Jesus has called us to do. He's called us to be a witness, and we know that we're going to be persecuted. There will be trouble, and so what are we to expect? And again, I'm I'm learning more and more about this. Uh, um, but I can, I, I, I can think of recent examples where my response could have been very different. And, and as I told the people that were with me, I said, I, I, I can pick a fight anytime I want to pick a fight. It's, mm -hmm. it's really the hard part is to respond and reply in kindness and try to get a resolution and to stop the escalation, stop the fire. That's really the challenge that we have. And so, you know, I, I look at it as, as my, my responses have been more to not escalate, but to try to de-escalate. I be, I feel that's very much the Christ-like thing to do mm -hmm. is to, Okay, then this is what's happening. I understand it, and we'll we'll see what the Lord's trying to teach us and what we're what we're going through here. You know the the last part of this passage makes it obvious that there's only one person who can tame us, so to speak. Mm. I mean, it uses the bit <clears throat> in the mouth. It uses the rudder on the ship as the analogies or, or metaphors and but the, the the real deal is it is the work of the Holy Spirit and the presence of God in our life mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. just really can bring the discipline, for lack of a better term, of what to say, how to say it, and what not to say, mm -hmm. uh, especially in these relationships. Mm -hmm. Wow. Any last thoughts before we put a ribbon on it today? Well, I know that in my household, I've tried to learn it's not what I say, but how I say it. Mm. Hopefully, Vicki, I'm learning. <laughs> don't give up, married, don't give years, up right? on me. It'll be yeah. 40, 44 this September. Oh, bro. Oh, my gosh. Okay. And she's still breaking me in. But, um, but yeah, I mean, uh, attitude and the way I've said things. Um, communicates more than sometimes the words I've spoken and I've been guilty, but you know, the most important thing is, is to say, regardless, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I did not mean that. I wish I could take those words back. I was wrong. That's, that's what you've got to do when these words come out, you know, out of an emotional, you know, heat, heated time, you've got to ask for forgiveness. You've got to, otherwise that stuff sits in there 
and it's like a cancer that grows. There and, we are. And it breaks relationships. I'm sure those that are listening to us have broken relationships. And a lot of it's a result of the word. Wrong words were spoken, and yeah. they never were asked to be forgiven. Yeah. So Well, what a good word to end uh, the podcast on, Ray. Thanks for sharing that. Hey, in your journey, hopefully we've shared something today that resonates with you, maybe even shared some ideas of how to practice workable, better solutions to avoid these heart wounds and then avoid having to unwind an unhealthy conversation. If we can help you in your journey with Christ, we really do want you to find and live in the great joy of the life that God has entrusted unto us. You can reach us at mountpisgah.org. And until we meet again, God bless you and have a wonderful day. Join us next time as we continue to learn to live with open hearts and open hands as followers of Jesus Christ. 